the all-wheel drive club Britpark Ravenel Safari Championship makes its way to Ilfragoom for the sixth round of what's turning into a fascinating championship campaign. We've got a two-way tie at the top of the point between Mark Holmes and Rod Parker and only three rounds left for them to settle it and decide who becomes champion in 2019. There are also several fascinating class championship battles still to be decided as we move into the pointy end of the season. So Holmes and Parker tied on points with Chris Cummings still looking for his first victory of the year but leading in Class 5. Harry and Jason Nickel ahead Class 7 whilst Philippa and James Tennant are enjoying a near perfect run in the Freelander Trophy. And that's right, we're here on the south coast at Ilfracoom. We've got a huge entry list, as you can see behind me, which includes over a handful of UTVs. So it'll be interesting to see how they get on this weekend. But let's focus our attention on the uh, championship fight, which includes Rod Parker and Mark Owens, currently tied on points of 491 points. This is the business end of the season, and this could tip the championship uh, in either way. Yeah, totally. This is, this is the one which Mark and myself both are going to be pushing for. And whoever comes out on top will have that edge going into the last two races where you can then have to sit back and have a bit of comfort and let the other person chase you. So, yeah, we're both going to be going out, as we always do, and going flat out. I mean, earlier this season, you did take the first few uh, stages with an air of caution. Uh, what's your mindset going into the first ones here? We have now a bit more time behind the wheel, a bit more experience with the car. Uh, it stands, it's pitfalls, and it, and, it, and it stands where it's got some advantage over the other cars. So our, our mindset going into the first, into this first lap is to let it have it. Now let's not forget, um, last round out, um, Rod Parker pushing the car to its limits, actually tore off one of his rear wings. And it was 12 months ago at this exact venue where you tore this one off. So this wing that's on the car now actually got torn off the car 12 months ago. <laughs> a lot of fiberglass later in gaffer tape and we've got it sorted. Um, yeah, the one we locked off at Bickley at the last round, that wasn't saveable. That was in six, seven pieces, so um, no, not saveable. But, you know, this we managed to get it back. Yeah. But if you're going out to hell for leather first off, there is potential you could damage the car early on. That's the risk we take every time. But at the end of the day, we need to go out with that mindset from the first lap um, because Mark is on it from the very start and we've got to be on it. Well, good luck and hopefully we'll see you at the end. Thank you, Anthony. All my best. Well, there's drama here at Ilfracoom even before the event gets underway. Joint Championship leader Mark Holmes has been excluded before the car's even turned a wheel. A technical infringement means he's not allowed to compete this weekend and it leaves the door wide open for Rod Parker to take a healthy points lead into the final two rounds. Mark will be able to use this as a drop score, but it puts the pressure on for the final two rounds as he tries to regain lost ground. In the early stages, though, it's the boogies that seem to have the edge. Paul Rowland's your early leader over a minute clear after the first two runs. He's part of a competitive Class 5 battle this weekend, but in the points, Chris Cumming enjoys over 50 points of a cushion over the rest of his class rivals. So the Class 5 battle in Round 6 is one to keep an eye on. Chris Cumming is currently leading Class 5. You've got your hands full this weekend, haven't you? Yes, yeah, um, I think there's eight in our class this weekend. Um, some very, very quick drivers. Um, Yes, we shall see. <laughs> <laughs> well, Paul Rollins is here, he's very quick. Um, Guy Smith, we don't really see racing in the UK anymore, but he's in a uh, turbo Charles Maverick with 200 brake horsepower, slightly more power than this, um, slightly heavier. Um, there's a lot of technical stuff through the forest and the woods, um, but then you're onto fast, uh, the fast fields, the jumps. Uh, how do you keep the belt warm in this kind of environment? Uh, cold, sorry. Cold, where well, we've got um, plenty of heated, heating ducts on the roof. Um, We've been playing with the clutch weights a little bit to try and get them better. Um, it's the biggest limiting factor we've got, really. <laughs> Who's going to win? Uh, I don't know, Rod Parker would take some beating, I would have thought. Um, not sure what's happening with Mark Holmes. But, um, yeah, but you can never discount the Rollins. Well, I don't know about Guy Smith. We shall see. We certainly will. Well, uh, good luck. Um, hopefully we'll see you at the end and potentially a podium. Yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> So with that, uh, Andy, who's going to take this one? Well, Chris Cummings is in second place in the early stages, but in danger of falling into the clutches of the rapid Mike Bakewell, who's only a second slower than him on run two, despite this being a course that should overwhelmingly favour the Polaris. Mike has had a consistent season so far, but with only one class victory to his name, he'll be keen to try and add to that tally this weekend.
Despite the lack of winner's silverware this year, he's rarely been off the podium, which is why he enjoys more than 70 points over the rest of his Class 9 rivals coming into this weekend. He's in third place in the early stages overall, but only one second clear of Guy Smith, making his first appearance of the season in the championship and immediately on the pace. One man who's no stranger to the off-road scene and no stranger to racing at all is uh, Guy Smith. Um, you're out in the um, UTV class this weekend, Class 5, um, for a shakedown with your uh, turbocharged Maverick uh, Can-Am. Uh, what are you thinking going into this uh, this round? Uh, we'll just do his best. Hopefully we'll get a top five finish. That's where we're hoping. But we've got one or two new things on the car that we want to test in England before we take it to France. This car's only done... 350 mile up to this weekend and uh, we just got a few customers that are having issues with little things and we thought we'd better try and get a solid understanding under a controlled environment so we've got a few extra sensors on this car what we're just we're testing and trying to get data that we can prove why things happen rather than them just happening and wondering why is that done it yeah. um, can have been very good to us they've given us a little bit of help and uh, we like the product I mean the difference between this and one of our own cars, it takes us a year to build a proto car. We can ship a can am in and in four weeks it's going through the door. You've got Paul Rowlands here this weekend, who's very quick as well. Uh, Chris Cummins is currently leading the Class 5 Championship. They're the ones going to be looking out for, but on the straights, I reckon uh, that this will uh, this will be quicker. Yeah, I think the, the first part of this course is, a, is probably better for Polaris. And then I think, like you said towards end, it's probably better for can am so... I think it's all down to timing seat as well. Paul's a good driver. He's got a lot of experience in SSVs and they do side by side stuff. So there's quite a few jumps in here that we'll be very nervous on because we're not, we don't really do that type of stuff. Whereas Paul should be in his element and, you know, he's just starting to do well now. He's had a lot of bad luck at the beginning of the season, but he, they're getting their act together now. He's, <laughs> He was flying at the last round of the British, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. Yeah. So, yeah, well, that's where the battle's going to come from. So yeah. it's great to see you back, and uh, good luck for this weekend. Thank you very much. So what of Rob Parker, then? Well, with Mark Holmes, his big championship mm -hmm. rival, guaranteed not to score any points this weekend, you could forgive Rod for taking things a little easier. Caution, though, is not a word that enters his vocabulary, and he's been pushing as hard as he can in the early stages, despite the fact this is not a course that suits this car one little bit. Through the tight and technical forest sections, he has been struggling. The damage on the rear of the car is a legacy of contact with a tree, just to illustrate that point. On the wide open sections, though, he is able to push, and he's doing his best to try and claw back some time. With Hones out of it, he wants to maximise this opportunity and take as many points from Ilford Cream as he possibly can. But that may mean that he has to take a few risks along the way. Only time will tell whether this attacking driving style is the right way to go. He's fifth place at the moment though, and no doubt needs to push as hard as he can to claw back the time to take big points from this round. Over a minute and a half off the lead, he's only 30 seconds behind second place though, so a podium is on the cards. Rob Scone is a driver who arrives at Ilfracoon with no championship challenge to concern himself with, and that apparent lack of pressure seems to be paying dividends. He's running sixth place overall after the first two runs, and well in the fight for a podium place. However, his main concern this weekend will be Class 9, where he's got the very rapid Mike Bakewell to go up against. Mike may be somewhere ahead in the early stages, but if Rob can get himself a podium this weekend, he'd probably consider that a job well done in what has been only a part-time campaign in 2019. Whilst Rod Parker may have lost his main Class 8 rival in the shape of Mark Hones, Alex Holford is still likely to be a real thorn in his side, as an impressive start to what is his first event of the season goes to show. Alex sits in 7th place after the first two runs, and 2nd in Class 8, only 30 seconds behind the championship leader, who he seems able to keep pace with, particularly through the tighter parts of the course. 
Alex is one of several drivers making their first appearance of the season this weekend in what is one of the biggest entries we've had all season long. That increase in numbers, though, means there's a higher level of competition across most of the classes, so those valuable championship points are harder to come by for those who really need them. One team that definitely could do with the points is Team Parry. They are the third squad in that Class 8 Championship battle, trying to chase after Mark Holmes and Ron Parker. They may not have had the overall pace so far this season, but a sequence of podium results means that they're only 11 points behind Holmes, who in turn is one ahead of Parker. Therefore, Rod and the Parrys could both really benefit from Holmes' lack of points this weekend. This event also sees Stephanie step into the driving seat for only the second time, so a consistent run is the priority. They've already said that their main aim this weekend is to get to the finish in one piece. However, a second place is up for grabs. They're only one second behind Alex Holford after the first two runs, and that may tempt them to go for the extra bonus points to try and buy back into the championship battle. Their day hasn't been without drama, though. The two-litre Vauxhall engine refused to fire up at the start of one run, Thankfully, they've got the problem sorted, and it doesn't seem to have returned for the time being. Hopefully, they'll continue like this, and maybe bring themselves back into title contention. Whilst it's very close for that second place in Class 8, both of those teams have a decent advantage over Bruce Mallett, who sits in ninth place overall, and third in Class 9 after the first two runs of the day. Mallet arrives here at Ilfracombe fourth in the Class 9 points and only nine behind Andy Skelly, so a top three in the championship race could still be on the cards if he has a decent final three rounds. Be sure to join us after the break to find out what happens as we head into the middle portion of this sixth round of the championship. One man who's had a, a rather interesting year with the Old World Drive Club is Bruce Mallett in his uh, um, Peugeot 3M. It's got a 4 litre V8 from a Lexus in the back of it, huge amounts of power. And um, we're here at Ilfracum. Um, what are you thinking going into uh, this round? Uh, trees and slippery lanes. Uh, uh, last year was my development year, and uh, last year I broke the steering and things, but there's been a lot of development since then. So. I'm hoping it would be a good event for me, and um, I think I've ironed out pretty much everything, although I shouldn't have said that, but <laughs> it does feel like I've got everything together now, and uh, so I'm going to give it a good crack. Yeah, you're, you're in a tough class, you're in uh, class nine, with uh, a lot of high-powered uh, vehicles and very quick drivers. Uh, with your car, everything's pretty much standard, isn't it? Standard engine, standard auto gearbox with a ratchet shifter. Um, yeah, everything's standard. The view was do that, get everything else right, which has taken me a year. And then I've got a supercharger in the garage ready to go on, and that'll bump me up to 350-ish, and that'll put me up with the other guys. So that's the plan. Well, as we head into the middle part of the day, let's take a look at what's happening in some of the classes a bit further down the order. In Class 4, it's a comfortable lead for Tim Pink. After the first four runs of the day, he's nearly four minutes clear of anybody else in class. If he can hang on to this result to the flag, it would be a brilliant result for a driver who has only actually finished one round so far this year. However, he still sits third in the Class 4 Championship, having scored 75 points at each of the first two rounds, despite not turning a wheel. That's because he acted as an official or a marshal those first two rounds of the season, and those championship points are now starting to come in handy. It's a great initiative and one that all of the drivers are encouraged to do, as it helps to keep the events well marshaled and plenty of officials there to help run them. He'll be hoping for another good class result this time around to keep himself in contention, potentially for second place in the championship race. It's a championship that's being led comfortably by Di Paul Hansen, but Di had a disappointing round last time out at Tiverton. He caught up with Anthony ahead of the event to talk us one person who didn't have it is all his own way at Tiverton was uh, Di Paul Hansen. Um, Di, you've had a, a bit of an interesting time getting here, haven't you? Talk yeah, us through it. Yes, I um, decided to change engines, which probably wasn't the best decision halfway through the season, but we've done it. Um, a little bit more power than before, so hopefully we should uh, be on the pace this weekend. A little bit more power. You've got nearly twice the power. <laughs> <laughs> you've got to play it down. <laughs> 
got 400 uh, new meters of torque, yeah. uh, pass feet of torque, coming from a, a TD5 Land Rover engine, 2.5 TD5, over 200 brake horsepower. Um, it's going to be quick for a little thing. Um, yeah. But firstly, uh, what number engine is that that's been in this car? Four? <laughs> Four, five? <laughs> <laughs> she bought a few, she ton. Yeah. And uh, have, you, have you took it for a, a proper test drive yet? No. Up and down industrial estate Wednesday night at about 11 o'clock, I was about it. So this is going to be one of the toughest shakedowns the car's ever had? I hope the, hope the axles hold together, that's only my worry. My, my worry. Oh yeah, because of uh, the amount of torque and power more going through? More power now, yes. The internals, apart from the rear diff, all the internals, the axles are standard, so it's whether they're going to take it. Thankfully for Dipol Hansen, his nearest Class 4 Championship rival Tony Rooney also had his own trials and tribulations last time at Tiverton. The pair of them left the fifth round of the championship with just 50 points apiece, meaning it's still a healthy championship advantage for Paul Hansen, whilst Rooney is even more comfortable in second place in the points. Therefore, his aim for the remaining rounds of the season is to notch up as many more podium finishes as he possibly can without having to worry too much about championship points. So far, so good then. He's running in third place at the moment, several minutes behind Paul Hansen, but even further clear of the rest of the Class 4 competitors. With a clean run through the rest of the day, a third podium of the year should be on its way to him. Back towards the sharp end now, and one of the biggest improvers through the middle part of the day, Stuart Williams. After the first two runs, he was languishing outside of the top 10. However, now the Class 5 Championship contender has worked his way into seventh place, fourth place in Class 5, as we hit the middle part of the event. Whilst it is turning into a slightly more promising day for him, he still will be a little disappointed. He arrived here second place in the Class 5 Championship, but over 50 points behind Championship leader Chris Cumming. With Chris looking likely to challenge for a class podium this weekend, Stuart needs to try and find a bit more speed he can to be able to go up there and challenge for more Championship points. Nonetheless, he's been enjoying himself and the upturn in pace is a good sign that he might yet be able to bring himself into contention as the day goes on. For now though, the spectators are thoroughly enjoying his full attacking driving style. The Ilfracoom course offering lots of long distance views with the cars in view, sometimes for several minutes, making it a firm favourite on the championship calendar. It's fair to say it's been an up and down season so far for Andy Dare. He's had good pace, a fourth place finish in class at Evervale early this year is testament to that, but sometimes things just don't seem to go his way. He's on top five form so far this weekend though. However, even this event has not been without its difficulties. He very nearly didn't race at all, as he'd left his race kit at home. Thankfully, his wife Lynn was able to deliver it to him, and he has been able to get out there on the course. He's also celebrating the marriage of his youngest daughter, Jade, and he'd no doubt love to get onto the podium this weekend to complete the celebrations in style. He's a little way off the podium at the moment, but this is a course that should suit the Polaris, so we'll keep an eye on him as the day goes on. Dealing with traffic is not something you'd necessarily associate with a safari type event, but for Rob Scone and Class 6 leader Daryl Hardy, things did get a little close for comfort at one of the high speed parts of the course. Thankfully, Daryl survived that moment and is still leading Class 6 by just over a minute. Could today be the day that he finally gets his first class victory of the year? He's been third on three separate occasions and must be well and truly ready to get to the top step of the podium here today. Keeping Daryl Hardy on his toes this weekend is Richard Haywood, who, along with his co-driver Kelly Thomas, are making their first ever safari competition appearance this weekend and are immediately showing front-running pace. Their tyres have been getting closer to those of Daryl, although they did drop 30 seconds in run number four. They're still running a solid second place in class six though, which is not bad at all, especially considering they bought the car without an engine. 
thankfully they've been able to piece it all together and it's running reasonably well. Some slight gearbox issues and an unresolvable misfire on Helm and Back. All things considered, they're still having a really positive day. They're loving the championship and the camaraderie in the paddock, and I'm fairly confident we'll see them back again in the very near future, and potentially even on the top step of the Class 6 podium before the end of the season. He's got experience of competing in Mark 1 Ford Escorts in classic reliability trials and car trials, and seems to be taken to safari competition like the proverbial duck to water. Another new name to keep an eye out for in the future. For Leighton Dodds and Martin Hayward, it's been a fantastic middle part of the year. Four consecutive podium finishes, including a victory at round two at Ebba Vale, means that they should be in championship contention within class six. They're nearly 100 points, though, behind Del Wheeler, who has not been out of the top five all season long. However, once the drop scores are applied, a non-finish at round one for Walters Arena for this pairing means that actually they're dropping far fewer points and are in fact within a point or so of the class championship lead. That makes this a particularly significant battle and they're ahead of Derek so far this weekend by quite a bit of time as well. Maybe the championship tide is starting now to switch in their favour as we move into the final third of the season. Well, earlier on in the day, Anthony was in the paddock and was able to catch up with their big championship rival, Derek Wheeler, to get his thoughts ahead of the event. As we've seen all year, the uh, the battle in Class 6 has been rather fierce, but somebody who's got a healthy lead coming into the uh, latter stages of the uh, championship and the season is Del Wheeler. Del, we're here at Ilfracombe, Coombe, beautiful sunshine, uh, track's dry. Um, what are your thoughts going into this one? Um, to be honest, I've never been here before, so for me, I'm just going to take it nice and slow and basically see what the track's like and try and get faster throughout the, as the day goes on, basically. Try and increase the speed. As we saw last round, uh, you, you're on the air of uh, caution. <laughs> <laughs> you took it rather steadily, but you got there in the end. Uh, you, you come away with the points and you're still, uh, still in, in the lead of the championship. Tortoise and the hare. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, let's not forget your, uh, your co-driver, Kirsty Randall. Kirsty, you've been involved with uh, off-road racing for many years. Your mother's uh, won this championship in the 80s as well, so is your advice going uh, far with him? Oh, I don't know. It's mainly keeping it on all four wheels, that's the main thing at the minute. <laughs> Learn the car and we'll see what happens. So you, you've been round here before, haven't you? I have, yeah. I um, used to race with Jason Nichols, so yeah, I've been round here <laughs> Quickly as well. Quickly, <laughs> but I don't know whether that's the best thing or not. <laughs> so your job today uh, and this weekend is just to, to keep his head on a level playing field and uh, get the car to the end? Yeah, bring her home. That's the main goal. You're going to listen to it? I'm 100% relying on Kirsty. <laughs> <laughs> Well, good luck to you both. Hopefully we'll see you at the end. Thank you. Thank Cheers, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Next up in Class 6 is Paul Wilkins making his first appearance of the season here in Round 6 of the Championship. He's still feeling his way in and getting used to the car and this unique form of competition. Whilst he's not quite on the overall Class 6 pace at the moment, he should be happy with the progress that he's making himself knocking nearly a minute and a half off his times within just the first four runs alone. If he can keep this pace up, and if we see him back again before the end of the year, he should definitely start to show top five potential before the year is out. This is a very tricky course to make your debut at as well. This car in particular not well suited to this really tight and bumpy terrain through the forests. Just keeping all four corners on the car is a real challenge. Roger Baker has twice been on the Class 6 podium this year, but he will not be getting another one here today. A maximum time incurred on run three has taken him well out of contention on this occasion. He'll be doing his best to try and catch up, but he's over 12 minutes behind anyone else in class. He'll be relying on some retirements ahead of him to pick up some more championship points. We'll find out whether he's able to do that after this break. Be sure to join us to see what happens next here at Ilfracoom. Hello 
and welcome back to Ilfracoon in the sixth round of the all-wheel drive club Britpark Ravenel Safari Championship. We're into the final third of the day now and it's been a relatively clean day for most crews. A short list of retirements headed by car 197 Ian Archer. He was running within class 7 but had had all sorts of problems throughout the day. A maximum time on both of the first two runs. He had a clean third and fourth run but was then out for the rest of the day with mechanical issues. Hopefully he'll be back next time and with a car that's working properly so we can see exactly what he and the car can do. Rod Parker meanwhile is really pushing on. He's just set the second fastest time on run three. But he's gone off. He's made a mistake in that forest section that he's been struggling with anyway. So he's already almost guaranteed to leave here with a championship lead over Mark Holmes. But he wants that to be as big a margin as possible. He needs to cut out those sort of mistakes, though. That's just cost him a big chunk of time. But really just needs to get through here in one piece. And he will take a decent margin to the penultimate round. Hang on, that doesn't sound good, though. The car suddenly sounds like it's in trouble and he's slowing. Rod Parker is pulling off to the side of the road. Would you believe it? It looks as though he might be out of the event altogether. So with Mark retiring before the event even starts, it just left uh, Rod Parker to nurse the car home. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. He blew the engine to pieces. Yeah, well, we were lucky to get around the first lap, to be fair. We, uh, we had three real near misses where it would have been a total write-off. Um, then we started really nicely. Fourth lap in, towards the end, we lost all power of the engine, catastrophic failure, crank went snap. Yeah, I mean, you've, you've, you've sort of quick the buggies are here this weekend, and you had to put your foot down, you, you had to go for it in the forest to, to get the win, and unfortunately that was the, the demise, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, we, 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 we lost a few parts in the forest, like we always do. We do like, we do like passing trees and touching them a little bit. But we, uh, we got through all that fine. It was out of the open stuff where we can make up our time. And we had to really give it some, and it is what it is. That's motorsport. Yeah. Well, it leaves you and Mark still joints uh, on points, but Chris Cummings could jump you. Yeah, I mean, you have to see how today goes, and we'll have to decide then what we do for the rest of the championship. Right, well, for now, commiserations. Thank you very much. It's going to be a long drive home. <laughs> Well, what drama in the championship battle then? Neither Rod Parker or Mark Hones are going to come out of Ilfracoon with a finish, and that could allow some of the others to start closing in on them in the championship battle. Well, Paul Rowlands is not a part of that championship battle, but he does look as though he could be on for the victory now. It's not all been plain sailing, though. A puncture on one of his runs, the sixth to be precise, threatened to send him back into the clutches of Rod Parker before Rod's untimely demise. Thankfully, with the tyre changed, Paul was back to his absolute best. The only driver now capable of getting below the 10-minute mark, he's continuing to extend his lead. Two and a half minutes clear now of anybody else, and he is odds-on favourite to take the victory here this weekend. You can see here why the Polaris is so well suited to this course. Brilliantly agile and nimble through some of the bumpy and tight sections, but really well balanced at high speed. No wonder they've been so hard to beat here at Ilfracoon. Well, now we ride on board with the man that could be set to really benefit from Parker and Hone's non finishes. Chris Cumming, who arrived here third in the championship and is now running a solid second place. He may be some way behind Paul Rollins, but he has built up a cushion now over the rest behind. If he can come home in second position, he will score 99 valuable championship points, which might just be enough to bring him back into contention for the title. Oh, that's a moment that he didn't need, though. A spin on one of the high-speed sections across the top of one of the fields. Thankfully, there's nothing to hit up there, so it's a harmless half rotation, and he will be able to rejoin with no damage done to the car. It goes to show, though, that mistakes can happen at any time to any one. For Chris, he must now finish. He has to try and finish, preferably on the podium, otherwise he can wave goodbye to any chance of fighting for the title will be a tense final few runs for Chris. Let's see whether or not he can keep it together to the flag.
Well, the big moments keep on coming for our front runners. This was a very lucky escape for Guy Smith, who's running in third place at the moment. Nearly ended up on his roof and in a ditch with that moment on a downhill section. Thankfully, he gathered it together and is still very much in the fight for second position. It looks, though, as if he and Chris Cumming are both pushing their cars to the absolute limit in their pursuit of second place. They both really want the position, but for different reasons. Cumming needs the points for his championship campaign, whereas for Guy Smith, this really is a glorified test session, testing the tyres and testing the car for any customers that may choose to compete in it in the future. For a first appearance in the championship, though, Guy Smith has certainly caught people's attention. He's in a fight now for a position inside the podium places and is less than a minute behind Chris Cumming. Might he be tempted to push that little bit harder and go for second place? Well, we'll find out. Four more runs to go and it could be done. One of the candidates for best improver of the day has to be Alex Freeman. This was his first event of the year. He readily admitted to being a little rusty when he arrived here, but his pace has improved dramatically as the day has gone on. He was well outside the top 10 in the early stages, by the end of run six has moved into fourth place overall and the lead of class seven. The class seven championship, meanwhile, is being led by Jason and Harry Nicholl. They're in second place, albeit some way behind the rapid Alex Freeman, and they caught up with Anthony earlier on. So currently leading Class 7 is Harry and Jason Nichols. Now Class 7 is the class for over 4 litres, uh, B Maxels and also naturally aspirated. Um, Harry, um, it's not you who's been doing all the driving this year, um, but you've still uh, taken part and you're currently uh, leading Class 7. How are you feeling going into uh, this round here at Ilf Ilfracoom? Yeah, there's a few more entries uh, for this weekend. So uh, I think there's about 5 or 6 in the class this weekend. There's some good drivers and uh, good cars. So uh, it's going to be a bit harder to win the class this weekend. We've kind of dominated it this year. Um, but I'm sort of trying to learn this car off Dad, um, and, uh, so I can go a bit more I've uh, got a 4.8 uh, Rover V8 in the back of it, uh, beam axles, uh, it's got an auto box, um, but it's also a sequential flat shift box as well, talk us through that. Yeah, that's what I like about driving this car, because it's literally just completely flat shift, but it is, and it's only a 1500 quid um, gearbox base, like 1500 pound conversion on it, so um, yeah, it's completely flat shift, you are literally concentrating on the driving, instead of, you know, clutch down gear touchdown gear so you're literally just flat shift straight through the box it's only four speed but it's a, it's a good box to have and yeah and is there a little battle between uh, you and jason uh, to who to see who gets the quickest time <laughs> well i'm quicker than him <laughs> <laughs> well i know i'm quite yeah, no, i think i'm quicker than him but to be fair he's he's doing all right this year but i'll let him have this year if i did all the last year in my car so um then i'll do the hill rallies and stuff but um, yeah, next year I'm gonna I'm gonna fight him to drive and drive all of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fair enough. Well, for now you've got to go and get scooting it, um, and good luck for the rest of this weekend. Hopefully Lovely. we'll see you at the top. Lovely, thank you. Rounding out the podium runners at this stage in Class Seven is Victoria Vaughan, but it's very close. She's only 30 seconds clear of Mark Swales in a battle that looks set to run right to the end of the event. If she can hang on to this third place, it would equal her season best effort from Walters Arena back at the start of the season. Since then, though, she's had a trying year, and if it hadn't have been for 75 bonus points gained for acting as an official or a marshal at the third round at Glanusk, she would be well down the Class 7 Championship race. As it is, she arrives here a comfortable second place and will be looking to finish this event in one piece so as to consolidate that position. The driver attempting to chase down Victoria for that podium position is Mark Swales, the last of the Class 7 runners still going. These two have been locked in combat from the word go, and the battle doesn't look to be easing up any as we move into the final few runs of the day. The pair of them have been trading times all day long. Of the six runs we've had so far, three have gone the way of Victoria, whilst Mark was quicker in the other three. However, a misfire on the first run of the day has meant that Mark's been playing catch-up ever since. Both Mark and his co-driver Monty, though, have been enjoying their first all-wheel drive club event together. Despite the misfire, has shown good pace as the day's gone on. It's been nice to see some new entrants in Class 7 this weekend as well. Not always the best supported class in the championship, but the cars are competitive, and as we can see here on one of the high-speed sections of the course, they look an awful lot of fun to drive too.
With the demise of our two pre-event class favourites in Class 8, it's been the turn of Team Parry to step up to the plate. They're looking good now to take their first win of the year. In fact, all they have to do is finish the event. Remarkably, despite the fact that Class 8 is usually one of the best subscribed classes in the championship, they are the only car still running in what has been a race of attrition for some of their fellow classmates. Understandably, therefore, the pace has been reduced slightly as we've gone into the afternoon. They know that all they have to do is get to the end in one piece, and 100 championship points will be theirs, more than enough to bring them into contention for the Class 8 title. After a relatively low attrition rate in the early stages, more and more drivers are now starting to fall by the wayside as the Ilford Group course takes its toll. We can add to the retirements list now Stuart Williams, who was running an impressive fifth position early on and well in the fight for another Class 5 podium. Sadly, he's out of the event now and will have to try and bounce back next time in order to consolidate his second place in the Class 5 Championship. We can also add to the non-finishers list Bruce Mallett, who sadly, having run a very promising second place in Class 9 earlier on today, will not make it to the end of this sixth round of the championship. He made it through into the early afternoon before pulling off into retirement, and sadly with it, losing his opportunity to try and take a third class podium finish of the year. Bruce will be back next time though, Hopefully he'll be the last of our retirements. Join us after the break for the run into the flag to see what result we get at the end of a fascinating day's competition. On to Class 1 now, and currently leading Class 1 is Philippa and James Tennant in the Freelander. They're also leading the Freelander Trophy. However, if you take into consideration drop scores, it's Richard Mayer Barron. Now, Richard... You've won every event that you've uh, took part in, um, and here at Ilfracombe, I've just been around the course, it's very tight and technical, there's trees everywhere, um, there's hills, there's uh, adverse camber, um, it's not going to be an easy one, is it? It never is here, I mean, it's you know, the good thing is we've got the weather with us, because uh, out in the open fields especially, it gets ever so slippery if it's slightly damp or the mist comes down, but... The woods, I've walked the woods, and yeah, it's as everything is. But as I say every time, we're used to the vehicle, we know what it can do now, we're getting used to the power, but now we've changed over to the EFI. Um, it is now a matter of bringing it home again, and I keep saying bringing it home, and I've got to, I've got so many people chasing my tail. And this weekend, we've got the black rat back out again, and he can be spectacular on occasions, he's very quick, but we're just hoping that it self-destructs again like it did at my day last year. So he's really the competition this weekend um, to take points from me. <clears throat> Good for him. Well, they all are. They could all take points from me. i just got to be careful in those woods, get it onto the open, especially on the long one-mile track up in that woods coming back. we just got to open it up, and that's where we've got to make our time back up for being slower in the, in, in the technicals, like you say. Yeah, and you've got uh, you work cut out for your, your, your service crew as well, because last round out, you lost a lot of bolts out of the hub, <laughs> and it nearly didn't make it. <coughs> Absolutely. So every bolt has got to be checked over twice yeah. or three times. Yeah, we've been through it again. Uh, we, we got it on the trailer. I got it on the trailer on Thursday evening. We've replaced all the uh, exhaust manifolds, the exhaust system, right back to the middle box, because the whole thing was split, and that was causing the problem. It was overheating the slave cylinder and boiling the, li uh, boiling the fluid, the brake fluid, uh, the clutch fluid, I apologise. So we've changed the clutch master cylinder, the slave cylinder, we've changed all the pipe work. Then we started work on the um, hub and we couldn't take the bolts out. They were, they were finished. So we chucked the hub away, new hub, new bolts, all back on, new bearings in place. It'll be a brand new car by the end of the season. In bits, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bit by bit, we're slowly rebuilding it. But um, as, uh, like uh, Daryl Hardy, my good friend, said to me, who obviously services with us, he said to me, he said, it's getting the car's getting quicker and quicker, and so am I. But what will happen now is there'll be other things that are starting to break on it. And he's absolutely right. And it is. I mean, the car is now. I, I, the car is quick now, and I'm happy with it. Yeah. Well, um, hopefully we'll see you at the end. Hopefully it's going to hold together. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, so good luck for this weekend. Thank you. And hopefully we'll be speaking to you at the end. Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, hopefully. And it comes back in the same shape it went out. <laughs> That's the one. I doubt that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah, right. And once again, I'd like to thank all our sponsors, especially Ravenol and Britpart who, and Par Homes who have, are here in, in force this weekend. Uh, and thank you very much for them. They put, this, these, put, they put these events together for us and make it happen.
So thank them very much. And a big thank you to all the marshals and the organisers. Um, Absolutely. Because without them, these kind of events wouldn't go on. So thank you very much to everybody. Yeah. Toby Cox finds himself third place in Class 1 going into the final part of the day, despite this being his first appearance of the season. This is a difficult event to make your debut on, so he'll be happy to have got through it relatively unscathed so far, and we're hoping to continue that form to the flag. He's several minutes adrift of the top two, but keeping things clean, and they are ahead at the moment of one of our big championship rivals. A bad day's work here, one has been a tough event all round, particularly for these more standard Class 1 cars. Class 1 battles are always amongst some of the most fiercely contested in the All-Wheel Drive Club Championship, and this weekend at Ilfracombe is no different. Luke Dodds and Kieran Jones, though, are uncharacteristically off the pace, and are not a factor for the overall class victory this weekend. In fact, it looks as though they may miss out on a podium spot for only the second time all season. They're down in fourth position, and whilst they are within 30 seconds of a podium place, they haven't really had the speed to contest all weekend long, and it looks as though they're set to lose a few more championship points to their big Class 1 championship rivals. Luke and Kieran arrived here at Ilfracombe just five points behind Philippa and James Tennant, but with the two Tennants fighting for a podium and these two down in fourth, that gap is set to increase. In fact, the Tennants are not only in podium contention, they could yet take the Class 1 victory. Their second position with one run to go and are only 13 seconds behind Richard Mayer Barron, the Class 1 leader. If they can take that maximum points haul, that would possibly put one hand on the championship trophy. They know better than most, though, that in Class 1, survival is key. These more standard machines often do start to struggle later on in the day as the course gets churned up and rutted. They need to try and keep things clean and get to the end in one piece to maintain and indeed extend their championship margin. Things haven't gone faultlessly so far for their Freelander. They had a car immobilise itself once again earlier on in the day and they had an issue with a loose bonnet pin. All things considered then, they'll be quite happy still to be in the running, let alone in contention for a class victory. The leaders, though, are going into their final run of the day. And for Paul Rollins, it looks like it's going to be a comfortable victory. He's got several minutes in hand over anybody else. That first podium and possibly first victory looks to be his. It's now Guy Smith, though, who is Paul Rowland's nearest rival. He has also gone into the nine-minute bracket as the day has gone on and has moved ahead of Chris Cumming, who, significantly, has run into mechanical issues late in the day. This has been a brilliant debut for Guy, though, and a perfect advert for a car that clearly has great potential. Well, with Chris Cummings' dramatic late issues, that elevates Alex Freeman into a hugely impressive third place overall on his return to competition. He's comfortably leading Class 7 and just needs to bring things home now with a clean final run, and he will be on the outright podium, a result that many people, Alex included, would never have predicted before the event began. All of this has come after various issues throughout the day as well. He had a rear shock mounting that broke on the second run of the day and from run six onwards has had no intercom. 
Carter hasn't been able to hear any of his selection of co-drivers that he's running with this weekend. If he can get to the end with no major dramas, it could be a real relief. Matthew Hall has also benefited from Chris Cummings' issues, and another one of Polaris's now fills out the third place within Class 5, fourth place overall. Not bad for someone who hasn't actually finished an event since Round 2 back at Evervale. He did have a slightly slow final couple of runs, but going into the final run of the day, he's still doing more than enough for what would be a very impressive first class podium of 2019, and he'll be keeping the pressure on in the hope that those in front of him run into some late troubles of their own. Despite a disappointing middle part of the season, once the drop scores are taken into account, Matthew is still in contention for a top five within the class five points table. All the more reason to keep on pushing and try and build on this current event to through to the next round. Joanne Pullins is taking things relatively easy this time around, having torn a wheel off last time out. She's keen to get to the end in one piece and isn't taking any unnecessary risks. That means she's some way off the class five pace. She's the last of the class five cars still running. Team Parry look likely to maintain their position at the top of Class 8, mainly by virtue of the fact they're the last Class 8 car still running. This would be their first victory of the season in Class, and they're running 5th place overall, which would be their best overall finish of the year so far too, a day to remember all round. They are one of many teams to have benefited from Chris Cummings' issues. Before he had those problems though, Anthony caught up with him when things were going so much better. Halfway through the event here at Ilfracum, and it's Paul Rowlands who currently leads after the demise of Rod Parker and Mark Holmes. However, it's Chris Cummings who is in the fight for the championship. Chris, um, with Rod Parker and Mark out, this could jump you um, to the top of the table in the uh, championship. Yes, yeah, we, um, yeah, we have realised, but we're just trying to keep our heads together to try and get a good finish today. Um, on the last lap, the belt started slipping, um, so. We, might have to just back off a bit now and try and go home. You know, hopefully stay on the podium, but just back off a little bit. Yeah, we saw you earlier pushing it a bit. Yeah, there's a few spins involved, um, so you just got to keep it all together and get it to the finish. Good luck. Yeah, thank you. Cheers. <laughs> Richard Hayward is now definitely the odds-on favourite to take the Class 6 victory. He's a couple of minutes clear now of Leighton Dodds and Martin Hayward on what has been a spectacular debut appearance in Safari competition. We'll see Richard back in the very near future. If we do, there's no doubt that he'll be a podium and class victory contender once more. It'd be even better to see him back for a full season campaign next year. This is definitely someone who's shown an awful lot of potential this weekend. While there is still time for some late drama, and off on the final run for Alex Freeman hands Matthew Hall a remarkable podium finish, meaning the top three cars are all in class five. Well, here is that result then. It's Rollins that takes the victory with Guy Smith second and Matthew Hall third. Three new names on the podium here in the sixth round of the championship. Team Parry are fourth and they win in Class 8, whilst the Nichols take another Class 7 victory. Class 1 is taken by Richard Mayer Barron with the tenants in second, extending their points lead. Well, here are those points. Then Chris Cumming takes over the points lead from Mike Bakewell with the Nichols third. But remember, this is before drop scores are applied. Parker drops down to fourth, Hones down to seventh, but they will still be in contention as we head to the penultimate round next time out back at Ebervale.